Welcome to JPAD Tuning. In 45 seconds, can you introduce yourself, tell us a bit about you, what you've been up to? Okay, so I am uh, Sam Thompson. I am a ex-cheerleader. I'm still working in the cheerlead industry. I have been a cheerleader for competitive 12 years. Um, I competed in the UK, competed for Team England, and also competed a season with the California All-Stars um, out in America. So I lived in San Francisco for a season. Um, so it's bronze, silver medalist, never got the gold. <laughs> <laughs> and thought it was time to retire when I couldn't get the gold. Oh, um, now I'm a educator. So yeah, a cheer educator. So I'll traveling and giving off my last 12 years back to the industry, really. So like, how did you actually, how did it come about like those 12 years ago? When, like, what made you go, right, I want to be a cheerleader? <laughs> so I actually was a competitive trampolinist first. Oh, okay. Um, so I competed high level or national trampolining. Um, and I actually used to struggle with being on my own. Yeah. Being 15, 20 foot in the air and being alone. And I actually used to get, I'd get halfway through routines and get off. Yeah. I'd, that weren't good enough. People were laughing at me. Uh. And I just couldn't deal with being on my own um and then it was actually one of my best pals actually he's gonna kill me for this uh <laughs> he was chasing a girl and she'd said yeah come try this cheerleading thing out and he went of and course gave it he a, said yeah yeah he, he gave, went and yeah. gave it a go and um he came back and everyone at trampolining were like what are you doing like taking the mick out of him and whatever <laughs> and then a few weeks on i was like you know i'll fancy just go and have a look yeah yeah that was that was like 13, Did he get the 14 girl, years ago. No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't oh, get the girl it. and I found a complete new love that is now my career and it wasn't the way I was going. So at the time I was a mechanic. I was a fully oh, okay. qualified. Um, so that is quite a, a light, flip really, isn't it? Yeah, light vehicle and, and car mechanic. But with my life, it was kind of, I kind of laughed because it was where I was going. I was always a performer, always the, the lighter upper in the room. Yeah. Always wanting to be on stage. Clearly, couldn't do it on my own. Yeah. Um, but as soon as I found cheer, I felt with a group of people, yeah. it felt great. Uh, I was always into team sports, so uh, rugby, played a bit of football. Um, so I was into team sport, but yeah, trampoline and just really enjoyed it, but just couldn't deal with that pressure. You needed the own. team yeah, around. Yeah. And, and then as soon as I found cheer, I had the team around me, I just flew and I'll tell you what, I felt like it was yesterday I started. Oh, and really? everything I've done and that's why I always say to people to try and keep stuff. The missus hates it, I'm a hoarder. <laughs> but like it goes so fast. Like just to just put in this jacket on to come out and meet you and found a jacket that I got in America and completely forgot I had it. Yeah. And then you start getting all flashbacks of things you've done and you completely forget like brings back memories, doesn't it? Yeah, so I always try and hold on to things. Never as I say she hates it because I hoard, but <laughs> I'm memory driven. Don't I don't care about money. Um <laughs> It's all about memories for me and yeah that's what it's all about isn't it but like so when when you did start like where where did you start what team did you join uh, i was on stars elite okay so stars elite in tamworth so just north of birmingham yeah. um and it was just literally in the town where i did trampolining so it was just local yeah um and that was a level three uh slash went to level four team uh, so yeah. okay and at what point did you go right i want to go to worlds uh, oh, I always want to be better. Yeah. If everyone knows me, I'd always want to be that one step further. Um, always want to be that. If you're going to do something, I'm going to do a bit more. Yeah, um, yeah. And I love to people who can't tell me I can't, I'll go and do it. Yeah. Um, and it was just so, I liked Coventry, used to love watching Coventry. Um, and they'd been to Worlds the year before. I was like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to try out. And someone actually said, not a chance you're getting on that team. Not yeah. a chance. And I was like, watch me. Um, so yeah, uh, put a tryout video together. Yeah. Went to try, got, got through the second round to tryouts. And yeah, my first season 2015, I went to Worlds. Yeah. Oh, that's wicked. What was that experience like? <laughs> well, in fact, actually, let's go back to the, um, you trying out. Thank you guys. You trying out. Like, what was that experience like? Obviously, you say... Intimidating. Yeah. And it's really funny, like, years after when you start talking to them and 
the people who you're on the team with, they never knew it, but you looked up to them and they were just kids themselves. Yeah, and yeah. Some of them were younger than me and I was at awe of how good they were. Yeah. Um, and very scary, intimidating. Um, but the person I am put me in a pressure situation. Yeah. And I'm going to thrive on it and I'm going to, which is one thing I have learned. So saying like what, five minutes ago, I couldn't deal with pressure trampoline on my own. Yeah. It was something I knew I had to fix. Yeah, so I forced yeah, yeah. myself to do it. Um, like doing things like this, sitting in my own studio doing podcasts, it's fine. Yeah. Doing this, I'm worried, I'm scared, I'm nervous, but I thrive on, if I didn't yeah. do it, I'd be annoyed, I'd be frustrated. Um, you, yeah, you'd be wondering the what if. Yeah. What if I did and all that, yeah. So like obviously you went, so you overcome that stage and you did your tryout, you got on the team. Then was it another sort of pressure on you? Like, oh my God, I'm actually oh, yeah. gonna do. <laughs> oh yeah, Get, um, first time out. First time out, I was in warm up and my partner stunt wasn't hitting. Um, oh. And I, I was just going to pot literally, and it was only a small comp. Yeah. Um, first regional of the season. And the coach just came up to me and she was like, um, I don't know if I can say it on camera really. She, uh, <laughs> she was, Sam, you need to find your. <clears throat> Um, because you're going out there, you're going to either drop it or you're not. You're going out there, you're doing it. Um, and that was just that kick I needed of that they kind of trusted me. Yeah. yeah. So you're going out there, whatever. Yeah. And then there was no ever, there wasn't a a reason to be worried. Um, but then that's then when I found even more of a love for cheer because that feeling of, of competing something that you were worried about. Yeah. Was like better feeling than just going out there and hitting a routine that you're really comfortable about if it's like do you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. you're worried about something but someone had that little pat on the back and say you've got this um yeah but the feeling of going from an okay level four team to then blowing the crowds away in a level five team was like yeah. this this is what I'm here world, for. Like, this is what i'm here for <laughs> like going on to the world stage like from my perspective it'd be a daunting feeling yeah. Like, what was it? So yeah, it was, so like that, the, the pressure cooker of if you can survive the bubble around it, the flying yeah. to America, the excitement of that, the pre-training schedule that's normally like a week's training intense before you even compete, yeah. the size of the arenas, the fact that the Americans are there, the Canadians are there. Um, if you could survive all that, and this actually happened to me first day of my first ever world, day one, and someone turned to me and said, it's, it's not as big as Bournemouth. <laughs> now, if people watching this or listening to this, Bournemouth Nationals is massive. And someone was like, Some, no one cares, we're English. Yeah. It's only day one and people don't care. Um, and I was like, oh. And I literally just <laughs> felt this. Whew, and you walked out and there literally was the English people that you've performed in the whole of the season in front of. Yeah. Other teams pointing at you and saying, let's go. And you know, oh, I'm comfortable now, I'm at home. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And as long as you can survive that thing around it and not work yourself up, then Worlds is an amazing experience. Oh, but if yeah. you get wrapped up with the bubble, then it can become a pressure cooker. Uh, obviously day two is, if you go through in a high place, it's then another game because then you're in warm up with Top Gun, you're in warm up with yeah. um, uh, Wildcats, you're in warm up with the big teams. All these you've teams placed. you've like been following. Yeah, then, like. then, then the added pressure of, now people care because it's day two and they're, they're here to watch them, not you, <laughs> but they're gonna see you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and England are doing well now. So I wouldn't like to be an athlete going to Worlds now from England. Because mm. England are, uh, are coming. We're good now. Yeah. We've won every division at ICU we can win. Yeah. Um, we're placing at least some one program in the UK is placing top five every year. Okay. So now people know we're coming. So now I wouldn't want to be an athlete because there is added pressure. Yeah, yeah. Of, okay, the, the UK are good. Uh, and I, <laughs> I never forget day two and the crowd were behind you and everyone loves cheer it doesn't matter where you're from or what you do or how you do it if you're doing it good everyone loves you and I remember one stunt just coming from extension to prep and you just lost the crowd silent oh, really? and we finished the routine silently <laughs> it was horrible oh, no. <laughs> but that's then where you know that maybe you were doing really well and we yeah, are on yeah. our way. And that was like 2015, I think. That was like 2015. So you know to yourself, like, we, thank you. Cheers. Like, we, we, you are on the way. 
and yeah. people are recognizing what's going on. Now we're like, what, how many years on? <laughs> yeah. Six years on, as I say, I wouldn't want to be an athlete going to Worlds now because there is a pressure on your shoulders, to be honest. Yeah. I suppose, like, obviously, go through the times there. Like, have you seen a massive, like, development over those 12 years that you've been involved? <laughs> yeah, the UK is sick now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the UK is sick now. Um, Oh, 100%. My first comp, so let's go back even further, like when I was at Stars Elite days. Yeah. You're max two or three boys on a team. Yeah. And that's probably, say, 10% of the people at that competition. Yes, like your Unity, um, uh, Cov weren't on really on the level five scene then, uh, Rising Stars, people like that. They were coming, they had maybe five or six boys. Yeah. They had maybe five or six boys. Um, but now you've got half the team or uh, me and one of my friends were, were talking the other day and he was on a team and the only girls on the team were the flyers the rest were boys yeah so that's one thing that's come on for me is this female dominated sport has now become for everyone yeah short tall <laughs> um uh male female like it's become not male dominated but the, the biggest change for me was um the, the amount of males and yeah. then also the talent level, the coaching level, the understanding level, the trust level that the UK are going to be good. We always thought, oh, Americans will win this. Americans yeah. will win that. Canadians will win this. Other countries are better than us. I think now we have a belief in ourselves. It's a completely our different like, mindset, isn't it, that you're approaching it with? Our own coaching and, structure. We believe yeah. in our own coaching structure. We're not, let's bring the Americans in. Yeah. Let's bring... The, the people in from the other countries that do well. Why not just believe in our own coaching structure? Yeah. To it's stick like to that. You've worked, you've worked hard for this. You've put in the hours. Your coaches have put in like the efforts to get you there. And you sort of go, well, why can't we win this? Yeah, 100%. And now, not to say they don't do things differently yeah, yeah. out there. <laughs> um, and mindset was a big thing for me when I was out there, um, was how ruthless they are in the uh, path for success. Yeah. Very ruthless. Um, but that's just their way. Yeah, yeah. In England, we can be ruthless, but we're very caring and we're timid towards that sort of stuff. But that's got us success. So who has always said that ruthlessness is always the way? Yeah. Um, like I say, we're now believing in our own structure. Yes, we've learned from them. And I learned a lot while I was out there. Um, but just that belief, and then your athletes believe in your coaches, then everyone believes, and then you're good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then, then things start to come, come to fruition, and things start to go the right way. Absolutely, mate. Thank you. Yeah. I suppose, like, so obviously you've put, you've done all that, and you've had all the experience, haven't you? Mm-hmm. But, like, if, say, you've got little Timmy that wants to be a world's athlete now, he's just starting out, Mm -hmm. What would you say to him to say, like, go for it? Say he like, wants to go to Worlds first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Be that person who says, I want to go to Worlds. I was the first person in that Stars Elite team to go for it. Yeah. Then I had three or four people follow me after that. Yeah. Who yeah. would never have believed themselves they could be there. Yeah. Um, so just to go for it. Say you're going to do it. Say you're going to work for it, but put the work in for it. Yeah. Um, and... The beautiful thing about cheerleading is, is it is a team sport. Yeah. I was never, I wouldn't even put myself in one of the top 50 cheerleaders in the UK. Maybe even lower than that, but I just went and did it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've seen so many people behind me who are way more talented than me. They've just never had that, I'm gonna go and do it. Um, now, when I moved to America, I was 28 years old. Yeah. I was done with cheerleading yeah. and this was my last chance and when I was out there, I was seen as pretty old. Um, but it was that I had to do it. I always dreamt of doing it. Didn't have the financial support at the time before that to do it. Um, but I just went it. and did it. You and same it, yeah. again, someone told me, not a chance, not a chance. What I had to do was send a video. You get a yes or a no. Yeah. You get a yes or a no. My life wouldn't have changed. I sent it, got a yes, my life changed. Um, I suppose it's like you were saying earlier, you hate being told you can't. Always. And then worst thing you can do to me is you won't <laughs> yeah. you won't or you can't yeah um the position i'm in now i'm not going to talk about where i'm at but the position where i'm at now people say you're lucky you're this you're that i'm not I've been, this has been building for 10 years yeah 
Um, since I've been in the industry, this is, this is where I wanted to be. That's the um, issue though, people don't see yeah, before, the hard yeah. work and they see them now, not before. Yeah. But, so going, obviously competing with England, to then going over to America, how long were you there for? 10 months. After you, mate. Thank you. 10 months. Um, so flew out not when their season started. Yeah. Because um, our season was still going on. Yeah. So they'd already picked their teams and stuff. Um, flew out and then yeah, I was out there for 10 months and th flew home two weeks after Worlds had finished. Oh, blimey. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was, it happened was that, that like, quick so and then it was over. Yeah, it was over. Um, it was nice to spend time with family and friends and old teammates. Yeah. Um, like Jack behind the camera. Um, spend time with old friends again in America, in the world setting where I've always been with them for the past six years yeah uh, it was nice to do that but very surreal of waking up in the hotel that the next day after finals and being yeah the family i lived with for 10 months just bye see you later <laughs> yeah, um well. but i mean you've made friends for friends and family for life there haven't oh you, really? yeah without what had gone on last year when i'd have gone i was oh, going yeah. back to worlds anyway um because i actually was going i'd been pulled back out of retirement to go back to worlds <laughs> um so I was going back and I was excited to see everyone, which was, was really exciting. But yeah, I will. They'll be coming to my wedding and stuff like that. Yeah. Lifelong friends, lifelong friends. That's what, that's what it's all about, really, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, because obviously you've got the competitive side, but it's not just about that, is it? You are making friends for life and... Oh, you need to... There was a, I saw a quote from a famous basketball player, actually, not long ago. And um, he was retiring from basketball yeah. and they asked him like what are you, are you gonna miss the sport and it was a bit like I'm not gonna miss the sport um, but I'm gonna okay. miss the I'm gonna miss the socializing yeah I'm gonna miss the team meals yeah I'm gonna miss the going out after a competition I'm gonna miss the meeting at practice and you're all dying together yeah he was like, that's what I'm gonna miss um, I suppose yeah it's what two three minutes on the floor but there's so much more behind it and oh that's you've got the, yeah like the band over and yeah you remember those times you remember the times when you had that moment yeah um that you never things you never ever forget on the floor yeah. but the amount of times oh now the boys that i was on a team with we become friends and we'd never met you before we became friends over cheerleading yeah. um we now meet Every time someone builds decking in their back garden, we meet and we build decking together. <laughs> and it, it, it's, it's like you've never been away from each other. Yeah. And we now haven't cheered together for three years. Um, and it's just like, it's like that family unit of then, when people ask me, why do they think Coventry did so well? And I would say the coaching, the ethic, the, the philosophies behind Coventry were there, yeah. but that bond that still isn't broken now is a reason why that team did so well from 2015 to 2018 was I think the last time that team were together. Um, and it's that I take away from it. I thank the sport for my friends. Yeah. Um, so you get the memories on the floor and you never forget some of them. There's little snippets that you never forget and but we'll all meet and 10 years down the time, you sit and you talk and you all remember the same thing because it was that, yeah. that life changing. I bet you do like reminisce on it and then just like what's occasionally laugh back oh, at all it. All the time, all the time. We get together for not cheerleading purposes. Building your deck. And all we talk and, about, yeah. yeah, and all we talk about <laughs> is cheerleading. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> things we way. did, things we shouldn't have done, yeah. moments we fell apart on the floor. Yeah. But we won and we lost together. Um, we only lost once in five years, but we <laughs> we won and we lost together, and that's the thing we, we we reminisce about those times too. Which, like I say, with that team was it was just just that team. It was special. Yeah. Um, and I can't really say I was. Yeah, I was. So even when I was back out in America, that was the hardest point. Being on a team of people that you've only just met for ten months, and that's it. Yeah. And still trying to get the same results as what you got with a team of your friends. Yeah, that you've been with for years. Yeah. It? Yeah. You have, yeah, you do class as your family kind of thing. Yeah. But I can, like, so what, obviously the competitive side and all that, but what else, like, has cheerleading taught you? Like, you're not on the mat, you're not performing or training, what? Discipline, hard work. Um, when you think you're down, you're not down. Yeah. Um, things won't always go your way. 
pressure. Yeah. Big pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Massive pressure. Um, enjoyment. Uh, I could, the list could go on. The list could go on. Um, I think any sport or any anything where you're under pressure um, can teach a person a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, this feeling. Really nice. Yeah, it can teach a person a lot. Um, to being on time, to not being late for practice. Yeah. Uh, which is always one of my points as a coach was always, if your practice starts at seven, if you're not there at quarter to seven, you're late. Yeah. <laughs> it's been um, punctual, isn't it? And, and that was a big thing that I learned from being in, in America was everything that they said, they then turn it back to life. Yeah. Well, are you going to do that at your job? You're not going to turn up to the right in the right uniform at work. Yeah. You're going to turn up late. Are you going to make an excuse to why you can't be there? Yeah. It was all about life, college. There's kids that were going on to college. It was, well, are you going to, are you going to fail college because you don't turn up? And, yeah. and that's what I loved that, that it was like, it's taken away from practice because practice isn't always going to be there. Yeah. The medals aren't always going to be there. Um, but the, the lessons and the skills you learn are always going to be there. It's, yeah, it's so much more, isn't it, than just being at that practice. I suppose, which is great that you can get that from a sport because others, like what well, you'd hope that other sports are like the same, but it's not always the way. There isn't the discipline and you can always... I think, I think in, in every sport it's there, but it's high level sport where you start to get it. Yeah. Um, grassroots, if you have a good grassroots program or a good minis in cheer yeah. and a good low level program, they can still start to instill things. Oh yeah. Um, which then, as the UK now, I think we're doing greatly. I was having a word um, <laughs> for growing from the bottom now. We've done with that whole every team's going to be level five. Yeah. And we're like, let's be really good at level one and two and three and four first. Let's then the four, it. five and six and seven will come. Um, I think we're doing really, really good at that. Really, really good at that. Like, so are you going to return to cheer or? Nope. No. Is that you? You uh, are retired my, so now. So my path was, yeah, my path was after I missed out on another gold medal yeah so i missed out on the team england team that won um headed to america was hoping that would bring me success came second and i thought i'm getting older now uh how much can i keep chasing this i've just said that medals don't really count they disappear yeah how long can i keep chasing this and not set up my future yeah so yeah. it was like okay I really want to coach. Yeah. Um, so I've set my sights on very, very big goals as a coach. And the pandemic hit, which put massive stops to that. And then just with life changes, my life went in a complete different direction. Yeah. And it offered me something incredible because it secured me for future, for the life, but yeah. still in the sport I love. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. Yeah, but, okay. I'm not going to say no. I'm not going to say I did say no, but I'm not going to say no. Um, uh, if I if I was called Whatever. upon, yeah, I'm never going to say no. Yeah, uh, because cheer gets you. I was on a course the other day, and I literally someone said like, "Oh, I'd, my partner just did it, and then that was ten years ago." And I was like, "That's what cheer does to you. It just drags you in, and you're there for life." Yeah. Um, which is, I'm in love with the sport, which is why I'm happy that I've now got a future forever. Unless something goes really, really wrong, I'm in it forever. Um, if, I was, if I was needed, I wouldn't say no. Yeah. If I was called upon, I wouldn't say no. But there is no <laughs> plan in the future for me to return to. Yeah. To, life just gets away with you. And it takes over, doesn't it? You need the mindset to be involved in four practices a week. Yeah. Um, to go to competition and and, and be, on your, be on your best six times in the year. And that just, your mind's got other stuff to do. Yeah. Um, but like obviously you, your whole, like because of the pandemic, everything changed and lifestyle and everything, but you obviously started a podcast during it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, where did, how did that come about? And so the coffee with some podcast actually came from someone who had originally asked me to do something we're just going to call that one thing the Coffee with Sam podcast. Yeah. Uh, I'm a massive coffee head. I've had about three already this morning. Yeah, don't blame me. Um, I have many throughout the day. Um, 
but it then I love to talk to people. You, I'm yeah. on the podcast now with you talking, yeah. not shutting up. Love talking, um, and it was literally my own mental welfare. I needed something to do. Yeah. At the time, I was refusing to get a job. So I was like, let's just jump on a Zoom call and have a chat. And then I loved it. Um, then I did a few cheer-based ones. Yeah. And then I had one friend on who he'd called me to ask me some advice, some business advice. Okay. And then we got into his career, and his career was being a Grenadier guard and guarding the oh, Queen. Oh, bro. Um, and I was like, bro, I really enjoy that conversation. Do I want to jump on the podcast? And I was like, ah, it goes away from cheer. Yeah. But, and I loved it. And that was it then. It was just free-flowing away from cheer and just talking to people and so is there like is there a avenue that it's going down or is it literally talking to interesting no i can so if it's cheer based like this i'll yeah. talk to someone um but as i meet people i'm just like you're really interesting let's talk about it yeah um it's just ex- exchanging had, stories and oh the stuff i've learned and it changes me again yeah i had someone there's about two or three times now i've already nearly cried on the podcast because people just drop things on me yeah and that started to make me think People like to talk to me. <laughs> um, one dude just given out that he'd had uh, very bad suicidal problems. Yeah. Um, one dude talking about his friend being blown up while he was out um, in the military. And that's still affecting him that he never talked about it, but he's talking to a random dude yeah. in the studio. Sometimes it's easier like that though, yeah. isn't it? And, um, and I explained to you, man, you'll have to come to the studio. So <laughs> when you're in that studio, you put the headphones on, the doors are shut and you get going, you're lost. Yeah. You can be in there for three hours and think you're in there for 10 minutes. Um, and that's where people get lost in it. Yeah. And it's a bit of meditation. Like I go in there on my own and I'm like panicky. What am I going to talk about? I have a little list. I'm like, how am I going to display this to be any good? An hour later, I'm like, whoa. whoa. <laughs> I'm like, that was That's sick. how you do and it. I'm just talking to myself and I'm just like it's, like, it's like some people find their meditation just sitting down, but. Yeah. I find it in just putting my headphones on and just losing myself in talking about stuff. Yeah, and see, I found that as well. Like when I started doing ones on my own yeah. and it was literally bullet points and it's like, how, how am I going to explain that? And then you do start explaining it. And like you said, you are just going for about an hour and then... I just get stimulated. Realise you're like, oh, just, yeah, yeah. Three coffees in, <laughs> feel it coming. I have a little come up and I'm like, let's go, let's do this. And we're in and then I come out of them and I'm like, wow, yeah. I enjoyed that. Now we've been on a long walk. <laughs> Let's talk uh, about your. I was, uh, I was waiting. When, I was literally waiting for when this was going to appear. I really was. Let's talk about your. Uh, yeah. My TV. experience on the void. Can yeah. I? It's got to be PG, though, hasn't it? So I yeah. did this on my own podcast, and I went off. <laughs> I went off about how angry I was. Now I don't care about me looking silly. It's not me I care about. I made myself looking stupid. I missed the first step and fell straight in. <laughs> like. That's again, it was that pressure thing being on my own. Yeah, yeah. And living in a hotel for a week on my own during the pandemic. Yeah. I've not been out away from home for months, I've been away. Um, I'm old, but it's still weird. Uh, couldn't, couldn't mix with the contestants. You're just literally on your own in a hotel waiting oh, for really? your call. Come, be filmed, go back. Okay, cool, we're not gonna tell you how you've done, but we need you here for the week just in case, so stayed. Um, but the worst part about it was was they contacted me, yeah, and I know what the TV have done to cheerleading, and how many I've no friends, I know people who have been on TV shows, and they make a mockery of cheerleading. Yeah. So when they contacted me, I said, "There's one thing I can't let you do is make a mockery of cheerleading." Now, as a fool, I fell for it. Yeah. They were like, "No, it's cool, it's sick what you did, and we want you on the show." And they were, they promised that that wouldn't happen. And then we got to the filming. And it was like an interview like this. And yeah. there was loads of like pole lights and leads. Okay, yeah. Now yeah. I discussed about doing a standing tuck back and they were like, yeah, cool. Got into the interview. Now nah, you can't do anything like that. Couldn't even do a jump. Now my jumps were never, not amazing now. They weren't amazing then, but they're not amazing now. So I couldn't do a jump, couldn't back tuck. Anything that was cool, apart from stunting, I couldn't do it. So they were like, well, you need to do something. So I'm just pressured in this. Yeah. There's, there's directors, there's big cameras, there's film men. So then I start just mimicking stunts, which was fine. So you're just doing the motions. And mimicking that. stunts. And then they asked me to do motions. So I did motions. And then we were just talking. And I got really deep about how dangerous cheer is. 
I don't know if you saw the void, you must have done to ask. <laughs> they then mixed me talking about how dangerous cheer was with me doing these really silly, what look silly motions. Yeah. And they had some real good musicality to it. So I'm not gonna say motions are silly because I do them for cheer. Mm. But the way they made it look was silly. So it was like, oh yeah, chilling is really, really uh, dangerous. And you can break your nose. I've seen broken noses, broken arms. And then the music would stop. And it would be me doing these really, yeah. really cheerly motions. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. And they, they literally set themselves out to make me look stupid. And I was like, wow, this is gonna be great. And um, obviously, did you see any of it before, Andrew? It was literally on the no. night that it was aired. No, literally the day everyone else saw it, I saw it. Oh, um, then I know TV's edited. Oh yeah, yeah. I know TV's edited, but I just, I took their word for it that it was gonna be okay. Yeah. And it wasn't. And then even down to going over the thing, it was actually funnier at the day because the, the, the commentators, Ashley Banjo and Fleur, they found it funny how I fell in and then how I clambered back up and didn't actually fall in first time and then got myself back up. Yeah. And they used none of it. And I was oh, like, what? so it gets even worse now because the actual bit that was pretty funny and like they, they got me saying, um, well, this isn't good, is it? Um, and, and that's all they had, whereas then, they then had Fleur saying, oh, right in the pom-poms. She didn't say it on the day because it was COVID. There was no audience. Yeah, yeah. Not an audience there. So I would have heard that and she didn't say that. So then they were like, oh, how much can we make more fun of it by yeah. editing it in? Um, which was just more frustrating. Like yeah, they're I still, can imagine. They're still then trying to set out to make me look silly. Um, even right from the beginning too, they asked me what I do. Podcasting. World, world champion medalist. Well, not world champion, but medals for being a world champion. Um, I'm, a, I'm an announcer, pro producer, or an announcer, sorry. And they put under my name, Sam Thompson likes long walks. So from the, the get-go, they were seeing they were me as a, a comedy act. Yeah. And finding any slip up that I did of saying, so they actually asked me, how have you trained for the void during lockdown? And I said, body weight and going out walking. So same again, they just took from that what they could to make it look funny. Mm, and so I will never trust the TV again now. And for uh -huh. me, it was more how stupid they made cheer look. Yeah, because yeah. we have this ongoing battle to make cheerleading look like a sport and be athletes. And every TV show, apart from Britain's Got Talent, uh, they did quite well, which is then you start to find out, yeah, it's ITV that have got it, mm. but it's actually a production company that do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can't slander ITV for doing it because they did great with, with Britain's Got Talent when I was on it with Coventry. They made us look really good. I'd say you were on that, wouldn't you? So apart from the music, where they wouldn't allow us to use cheer music and they used like some like na 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 and it made yeah. it look more like acrobatics, they actually made cheer look really good and it was actually a really good example of cheerleading because every time cheerleaders have been on Britain's Got Talent, they'd show them do one thing. Yeah. Two or three things. This yeah, whereas it was on, the whole routine, wasn't it? We got a full on, it? here's the routine, look how good it is. Yeah. So finally that was good, but it was that extra, I just thought, you know what, this is going to be it. They're going to they're gonna be nice to cheer from now on and nah. clearly not. <laughs> oh, man. But it's funny for me. And all yeah. you got to do is laugh. Literally people ask me, like, do you feel stupid now? Not at all. Not nah. at all. It's funny. It was something for me to talk about on my story. It's yeah. something for us to talk about now. It was another experience for me to do. Um, you just got to brush it off, haven't you? And yeah, it's one of those. Move it's on, one kind of those. thing. Like, it's just more, it was more the impact on the sport again. Yeah. Which got me the pom-poms jumping into it again. Um, the bit where they recorded me saying, me going, woo, pom-poms. That was actually them asking me, what do people say when they first meet you and you're a male cheerleader? I was just saying, oh, they go, oh, where's your pom-poms? I found that as well. Like Every time I say that we photograph cheerleaders, they're like, oh, get your pom-poms out. And it's like, well, actually, if you paid attention to it more, you rarely Is see this them. like you and doing it now, you filming this and then just snipping me going, oh, where's your pom-poms? Yeah. exactly what they did to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just like, if I could get hold of the producer, I would do very nasty things to them because it's yeah. the sport again. Yeah. It's the sport again. Not that I don't put past pom dance. Pom dance is good. And obviously when we go to Team England, we use poms because it's still part of ICU. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we, that stigma needs to go. Um, for the sport to take a next step on. Yeah. Um, it has been, it's been accepted into the Olympics, so we're on our way. But that's it. yeah, it's that's just, what yeah, the it's just educating the people. And I do love a thing. long walk. I mean, yeah. I'm actually thinking about t-shirts made, to be honest. Yeah, do it, mate. Like, I like long walks or something like that. Bit of merch for you. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. Yeah. Right, so yeah, obviously we've been talking for quite a while now. This, um, if, I could do that forever. Yeah, so, so could I, <laughs> to be honest. But like, moving forward for 
Actually, I've got one question for you that I didn't ask earlier. We, we sort of covered it, but how is it as a male in a female dominated sport? Although it is progressing and there is more percentage of males, which we've seen over the years, how is it? Because obviously I've seen recently on social, you've, you've done inspirational like videos Oh, I sent one to Patrick, didn't I? Yeah, yeah because in, in, obviously um, there, is, there is the... Yeah, he was bullied heavily. Yeah, there is the bullies out there, but... It's, it's a hard it's, one for me because I've never cared. Yeah. You say what you want to say about me. I made fun of myself on national TV. Yeah. I've never cared. Even as a kid, I danced as a kid. I was in marching bands as a kid and I got ripped at school for it. But it was yeah. cool to me. I could play a drum whilst not even looking at it. Yeah. I could walk down the road and I could stare forward and play my drum. It was cool to me. Yeah. Um, I actually had like four drums and I could play and just step oh, and sit and talk to you and it'd be fine. Um, and just thought it was cool. And as long as I was happy, whatever you said to me, I wrote it out. And if you were nasty to me, you weren't anything I needed to be bothered about because you clearly weren't a friend or you weren't yeah. an acquaintance of mine. Now that's not hard, that's, that's hard for some people. Yeah. So for me just to say that, it's like saying, lose weight, stop eating as much. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's that simple thing of stop caring. It is very hard, um, but that's the only advice I can give. If you love what you're doing, ignore the noise. Yeah, keep ignore doing everyone it. else from the outside and just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Um, it is getting easier. Like I say, when I was on Team England and I went, this must be something in the water they have in London. When I started then cheering with the people from London, and they were men, yeah. like, like six foot men, <laughs> like big men. And you think that's who I was hanging around with, like 15 of them. Yeah. Like you wouldn't have messed with us if we'd have gone for a summit to eat. Yeah. And it'd have been really funny if someone did try to, and you say we're a bunch of cheerleaders, like it would be great. Um, I think because as the sport gets on and you see it in America, they're all big mm. men. Um, now, not to say that we don't have, we're not diverse in the sport. And they're not all big, burly men. Um, but anyone who is doing what they love, they should be proud of it, whatever yeah. way they want to do it. And I think that's one thing in the cheerleading industry that is great, that yeah. we do not discriminate at all to anybody. Um, like, I've seen, I competed with someone who was um, going through not in the UK, so don't take this and then start running with it. Someone I did compete with someone yeah. though, who was going through transition, wore wigs. They allowed it. Like there was no standard, and I didn't see that person as any different, any no, different don't. at all. They were just still a world-class athlete yeah. who just wasn't comfortable in their own body. And I think as a sport, that would have been blown up if it was anywhere else. Yeah. If that was athletics or football or rugby, it'd have been, mainstream it had been blown up yeah. in cheer it was just used to it and what which is yeah cool yeah. um it's one of those and you can be in the uk we're just we're just the same we're just as diverse someone walks into a gym whatever they're wearing how they look um i've seen some of the world best world's best stunters that don't look like athletes yeah mm -hmm. not saying that we shouldn't start to strive for our athletes to be more athletic but some of the best stunters i've ever seen don't look like athletes and they are yeah, um, yeah. So as the sport, I think if you are going to be someone who is subject to bullying and stuff, look for your industry to look after you, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that makes complete sense. Yeah, look, look for your industry because your industry is there to look after you because as cheerleaders, we're diverse. Yeah. Um, it can get a bit nasty, but not about that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can get competitive, but if, if you, I feel if you were being bullied in a cheerleading gym, then that bully would not last long in that chilly region. No, gym. without a doubt. Um, because as a sport, I think we're great. I think we're great at looking after that. So to anyone who is watching or listening, if they do go through it, look for your team, your industry, everyone else in the industry to, to back you up. And yeah, if they're happy- speaking to someone about it and your team is there for that. If you're happy, then you're safe because yeah. anyone outside of that who wants to bully you for doing something you love, they're, they're irrelevant. Mm. You shouldn't care what they want to say. You're irrelevant. And the social media is hard. I was waiting for it after the void. I was like, come on, let's yeah. go. I was at home, ready. I was ready for, <laughs> for, the, for the onslaught. Best thing you can do though, and I learned this from a very, very new close uh, workmate, make fun of yourself, whatever goes wrong. Whatever yeah. you do, make fun of yourself. So as soon as that show finished, I was on Instagram making yeah. fun of it. No one had got nothing they could say to me then. 
No, that's it. Yeah, the, the, all they throw at me is long walks. I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> I like being healthy and going out walking. Yeah. Good job, mate. Ha, I, cool, I carry we all did it. What you got next, mate? <laughs> yeah. um, I think so, we all did it during the pandemic, though, so we all like long walks, <laughs> yeah, don't we? Yeah. But um, no, like, I've always seen it as, like, um, bullies are only bullies because they're threatened by you. Yeah, they're, not, they're insecure in their own yeah. life. Yeah. They're threatened they're, about, like, what you've got and what you can achieve. Yeah, well, I, I love it. Yeah. My, my, my oldest brother was, he's a very, he's a lot older, so he's very old school, manly man. Mm-hmm. And he would always back me up. So mm. we were out anywhere or anyone, if it was his friends that would try and ask, is your little brother like, mm. yeah, because this is what he does. And he's like, I couldn't care less. Yeah. I couldn't care less. Um, when I was in America, he was telling everyone I was in America. Like, and he, he was just like, I couldn't care. And that was always the question he used to get. And he'd be like, why, is it a problem? Yeah. And they're like, oh, no, 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 it's not. I was just asking, why are you asking? It's irrelevant. Like, why? Yeah. Why? Just, just because he likes, to, he likes to do flips and tricks and, and, and perform means that he has to then be subject to people thinking things about them. And, yeah. Um, That's true. Yeah, so it's true. Just, it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it, I think it's, it's going. I, I, I do feel like we're getting somewhere. Yeah. We are getting somewhere. And, and I might be blind to it because I'm in the cheer industry. So because we're so diverse and we allow it to, to be okay. I, I think it is. Not allow it, it sorry. We accept it and we push it to be okay. Maybe outside of this bubble it still goes on, but... Yeah, unfortunately it will, but as long as you stay true to yourself and make sure you're happy... Yeah, 100%. That's the best thing, isn't it? But like, say, so, yeah, so last bit of advice from you. What would you say to someone that's sat at home waiting to get in a gym or wants to get in a gym? Never done cheer before? Or? Ne- never done cheer or considering doing cheer. They saw you on the void or they saw you on... You wouldn't right. want to do cheer to <laughs> the void. Like got twinkle got toes, man. I couldn't even walk on the <laughs> void, let alone do cheerleading. Um, not just cheer-based, man. Just go and do something. Like yeah. anything. Just literally say it and go and do it. Yeah. It can sound so cliche these days because you've got fit inspo and you've got hashtag successful and... Instagram famous and whatever, but have an idea, go and do it. If, you've, if you're doing nothing, and the thing with cheer is if you, if you want to talk cheerleading, it's changed my life. It literally mm. has changed my life. Um, and it's, I'd say it sounds really, really cringy, but the friends, the memories you make, my last 12 years have been incredible. Um, and all my friends now are from cheerleading. Mm. Every friend, people I'm gonna to invite to my wedding, Best friends, friends I can call on for anything are all from cheerleading. And if you have, if you're like, you're surrounded with like-minded people, then that's going to happen, and they're always going to be there for you. Yeah. Um, I, I could call on someone from a team that I didn't like, probably, and they'd still be like, you know what, I want to go and help because that's yeah. what the cheer industry is like. Like, oh, I've never even met him before. Um, we we'd never met till today. No, yeah. Yeah, and you just yeah. you because of the cheer industry, it's, if you're not the same, you don't stay. No, yeah. The only people I think are rejects in the cheer industry are parents, <laughs> because they they're the ones that are just a bit different. Yeah, um, yeah. But everyone else in the cheer industry that gets the cheer industry that's involved in the cheer industry, we're all the same. We're all like-minded. So if you're thinking of starting cheerleading, and you want that feeling of being in a family and accepted, go for it. Um, and it will teach you like le- life le- life lessons. But if not, just go start something. Hundred percent, go start something. Don't get me wrong, but I'm done with you